Jesus suffered and died to pardon and sanctify me. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my troll. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to church this morning. Um, I am filling in today for Tim, who's called in sick. I'm not doing the preaching part, just to put your mind at ease there. I am just the worship leader today. Um, and Tim um, has picked all the songs for today, so hopefully that makes it easier <laughs> for us all. <laughs> um, he writes, um, he quoted from Isaiah in chapter 8 of his prophecy, um, to the testimony, to the teaching and to the testimony, if they will not speak according to this word, it is because they have no dawn or light. Without the light of God's word, we walk in darkness 
and will be tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful schemes. Let's worship our great and powerful God now. Father, your word is true and your love is better than life. What shall we fear? We worship you now through your son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with us and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Let's stand and sing, O Church Arise. chose was by faith and um, the authors of this song wrote that they tried to chart the role of faith throughout history from the faith of the earliest Old Testament characters which caused them to do extraordinary things to the faith of the prophets who prophesied the coming of the Christ to the faith of the early church who went to the nations and to the call for us too, to trust in the power of Christ in our own lives and in the power of the gospel to bring people to Christ let's sing by faith Bye. 
And our um, final song to sing before, <laughs> before you get a chance to sit down is Oh for a Thousand Tongues. Now, I have an apology to make to Tim, who's probably zooming in at home. We're sorry, Tim. Um, the piano <laughs> player has um, stepped in and... We're very sorry, Tim. Really sorry. And we are doing the traditional <laughs> version of Oh for a Thousand Tongues. <laughs> Tim has chosen a different version, a bit more, uh, just a different style, and we've gone traditional. So we're apologising to Tim, but we like his version. Very so. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and we need some good strong male singers for the um, the chorus part too. So step in, male. <laughs> sheets at the back where the pencils are there if kids are looking for things to do during the sermon and normally Vanessa Grant collects them for um, prizes for participation so if you have finished your sh sheet at the end of the service I will collect them and leave them here for Tim this week. Um, Christianity Explored is being held um, and afterwards a discipleship course child safety um, with Alyssa stepping down as the child safety coordinator all child safety plans will now have to come to Tim prior to this term starting um, and if you don't get our weekly newsletter or SMS or aren't on the church fellowship page on Facebook um, see Tim or myself or Christy and we can help hook you up there um, there's also the church life survey was sent out this week, so we're encouraged to complete that. I'm not sure of the closing date for that one, but it's very soon. Um, and we will now have the offering. Is the people designated to do that? Or is that my job? Sorry. <laughs> Thank you.
Um, we have a short video for the children now um, that Tim's picked for you. Um, so if you want to just turn your eyes to the screen, it'll be up there. Like many believers, the Apostle John faced suffering and persecution for telling people about Jesus. The Roman Emperor punished John by sending him to an island called Patmos. While John was on the island, he had a vision. John heard a loud voice like a trumpet. The voice said, write on a scroll what you see. Then send the message to the seven churches in Asia. Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. John turned around to see whose voice he heard. He saw seven golden lampstands, and he saw Jesus, the Son of Man. Jesus was wearing a long robe with a gold sash wrapped around his chest. His head and hair were as white as snow, and his eyes were like a fiery flame. Jesus' feet were like strong, polished bronze, and his voice sounded like a roaring waterfall. Jesus had seven stars in his right hand, and a sharp, double-edged sword came from his mouth. Jesus' face was shining like the sun. When John saw Jesus, he fell at Jesus' feet. Jesus put his hand on John and commanded him, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last and the living one. I was dead, but look, I am alive forever and ever. Jesus explained that the seven lampstands were the seven churches. He told John to write about everything he had seen. Jesus showed himself to John and explained that he is the first and the last, the living one. While Jesus was on earth, he defeated sin and death by dying on the cross and coming back to life. Now, Jesus is lifted up in glory and honor forever and ever. Okay. Um, we're going to ne now head into a short time of prayer. I'm going to open it up as a corporate prayer today. So if you feel you are led to pray, um, as long as it's edifying, obviously, to us as a church body, um, please pray as you feel led out loud. And I'll close at the end after sufficient silence.
Dear God, we just thank you that we can gather here and um, as a family, a church family, and we um, are thankful for the freedom that we have here in Australia despite the um, other things going on amongst us and all the other issues that are there. We just remember that you are our focus. You're the one we look to. and You've got it all in your hands. <coughs> we just pray for the offering that we collected before too, Lord, that you'll use that. You'll give us wisdom to use it for your way and what you intend, Lord. Amen. Um, I'm going to read to you from a section of Psalm 119 before we lead into a song. And you're welcome to stand up when we start singing. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn an oath and confirmed it to keep your righteous rules. I am severely afflicted. Give me life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept my free will offerings of praise, O Lord, and teach me your rules. I hold my life in your hand continually, but I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, but I do not stray from your precepts. Your testimonies are my heritage forever, for they are the joy of my heart. I incline my heart to perform your statutes forever to the end. Please stand. Tim's um, illness today, um, we don't have a stand-in person at the front. We have a virtual minister today um, coming for us on the screen. He's uploaded a sermon from the Queensland Baptist Resource Library. (laughs) It's from Psalm 1 if you want to look up the passage. G'day Church, I'm Stuart Peeper, the Director of uh, QB Services and uh, wherever you're joining today, uh, I welcome you uh, uh, to this uh, message on Psalm chapter 1. You might like to uh, stop uh, the video at this point and and, uh, read 
Psalm chapter 1 just to get uh, context uh, to this message. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. Psalms 1. I don't know if you remember, a few years back there used to be ads on television uh, about the gold lotto. And they had the little tagline that said, wouldn't it be nice to win a million? And the advert showed all these people who were happy because they won uh, the lotto and won a million dollars. And they all looked like the, they were living the life that they'd always wanted. I think we all have a picture of, of what life could be and, and what the life we've always wanted uh, looks like. I think we all have an overwhelming desire to be happy. I don't think anyone wants to be deliberately uh, unhappy in their life. I think we're wired that way. Now, uh, people seek to find the life that they think they want uh, through many different ways. They try and find happiness through many different avenues. It might be therapy or uh, weight loss or plastic surgery or the accumulation of things. It could be gambling to win on the lotto. Uh, all of these things might promise happiness and the life we really want, but in reality, they, they fail to deliver. I think Psalm chapter 1 contains a biblical pathway to the life we've always wanted. Uh, this psalm could be described as a summary of the basic teaching of the whole book of Psalms or, or summed up in a, in a microcosm, if you like, in, in, in one chapter. The psalm, I think, answers a fundamental question, though. How do I find the life that I've always wanted? How do I find the blessed life? Uh, this psalm is an interesting structure. It's, uh, there's three things to avoid that we'll talk about in a minute, two things to embrace, and one contrast to remember. Let's start with the things to avoid. Uh, psalm chapter 1, verse 1 says, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked. Uh, this is talking about who we allow to influence us. It's about alignment. It's about direction. Uh, in, in the English Standard uh, Version of the Bible, it says, Blessed is the one who walks not in the counsel of the wicked. And so it's talking about who we listen to, who uh, we process information with, and, and what principles we might take on board to govern our minds. Uh, living the life you've always wanted involves not following those who don't take to heart the following the teaching of God. Uh, those who reject God, uh, those who are not in relationship with God can be mistaken about many things when it comes to spiritual matters. Now, these people, they might be sincere people, they might be nice people, but you can still be sincere and you can still be nice and still be wrong. Uh, for instance, uh, when the motor car was invented uh, and developed speeds that were faster than a horse could travel, it was widely believed uh, by the majority of people that the human body would not be able to withstand speeds above 100 kilometres an hour. Uh, they really believed it. They believed that you know, cars should be limited uh, to under 100 kilometres an hour because people would just, the bodies would uh, break up uh, because of the speed involved. Now, we all know that, that that's not true because most of us uh, on a daily basis, particularly if we're on the motorway, are going to travel at those speeds and still uh, survive. Um, so people can be wrong about many things. And so what Psalm 1 is saying is uh, don't get involved with those who aren't getting their counsel and direction from God, uh, that we should avoid those uh, who, who aren't uh, following God and, and the direction they might give. And secondly, is about uh, to avoid is, is who we identify with. Uh, the Psalm goes on to say, or stand in the way that sinners take. Don't stand in the way that sinners take. What's that talking about? That's talking about identification. It's identifying uh, with the behaviour of those 
who don't follow God. Now, it's not saying that we shouldn't stand for something or, or believe in, in certain things and take a stand on, on various issues. It's not, it's not saying that. Uh, we, we should, and, and it's right for us to take a stand on, on some uh, particular issues, uh, particularly those that are of, uh, of importance for us in, in morality and, and good order in society. Uh, but what it's talking about is the value and behaviour that we shouldn't stand for, uh, for those that, that don't follow Jesus. They're actually described as sinners. Uh, do not stand in the way that sinners take. Uh, sin at, at its heart is rebellion against God. And so uh, sin's not just the, the wrong things, but an also an attitude that says, I can do life on my own. I don't need God. Uh, I know best uh, and, and I'll, I'll be in charge of my own future. Thank you very much. It's a, living independently of God is, is what at the heart of, of sin is. And so we need to be careful not to embrace a value system uh, that is the way of those who are in rebellion against God. Uh, the person who refuses to be identified with the behaviour or the way of those who are rebelling against God is on the path to the life they've always wanted. The, th the third uh, thing to avoid is looking at who we partner with. Uh, the, the psalm goes on to say, or sit in the company of mockers, uh, sitting in the company of mockers. Uh, don't have close fellowship with those who are opposed to the things of God those who mock the things of God. Now, this psalm's not saying don't ever talk to people who don't know God or shun them or, or associate them with, uh, with them at all. I mean, how can we be salt and light? How can, we, uh, how can we share the gospel, the good news of Jesus and be positive influences if we don't relate to people? It's not saying that at all. But what I think it is saying is that not to get deeply involved with the philosophies that govern those who are opposed to God. Uh, the Hebrew word for, uh, for um, to sit uh, means to dwell or to remain or even to marry. So it, it's about alignment, about positioning and agreement. Don't come into agreement with those who mock or, or reject God. Uh, the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15.33 these words, Don't be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. I think he, he's uh, saying the same sort of thing that the, the psalm is saying. Be careful who you allow to influence you. Be careful who you align yourself with and, and be careful who you partner with. And so here we have a uh, path uh, to a life we've always wanted uh, by avoiding uh, these three things. Now notice there's a downward progression here and I don't think it's any accident. There's a walking, there's a standing and there's a sitting. You see, when we become uh, attracted to and accept the wrong things, it can lead to a, a downward spiral for us. Now, a little bit like uh, what sometimes happened for me is there's something on the television, uh, there might be a movie or something, and I'll be walking past and it'll catch my eye and I'll walk towards the television. And the next thing I know, I'm standing there watching it. And before I know it, I'm sitting down and I've sat through the whole movie or whatever the show is. Uh, so there's a, there's a downward progression here. It's also worth noting uh, when the psalm talks about the wicked and talks about sinners and, and scoffers, it's not necessarily talking about the worst kind of people that we can imagine. And these might be nice people. Or they might be community-minded people. Or they might do good things. Uh, they might be very friendly. Uh, but in Psalms, the, the, the people in this category are those who are seeking to live their lives without God. Uh, they, they're rejecting God and, and they want to live independently of him. Uh, and, and so when we follow the advice of the wicked, when we accept the value of sinners, when we have deep association and agreement with, with the mockers and scornful, we're actually subjecting ourselves to the threat of spiritual paralysis. And so happy is the person, the psalm says, who avoids walking in the counsel of the wicked and standing in the way of sinners and sitting at the seat of mockers. So they're the three things to avoid. Now there's two things that we should embrace. So, you know, it's not all about staying away from certain things. There's, there's some things that we need to be doing too to live the life we've always wanted. And they are, first of all, to delight in the law of the Lord. Uh, Psalm 1 verse 2 says, Delight in the law of the Lord, and on his law meditate day and night. Now what that means is not just taking an, an intellectual or a passing interest in the things of God, but to delight in them. You see, when you delight in something, you pursue it. 
You find out more about it. You, be, you become an enthusiast. You see, when you're passionate about something, you delight in it you, you, and you want to know more about it. You want, you want to uh, involve yourself in it and throw yourself into it. Uh, my wife, Teresa, and I grew up in the same church. We'd known each other uh, since we were uh, very young. Uh, and uh, even though uh, we knew each other and, uh, and, and we had this indifferent relationship growing up, uh, she thought I was a bully, uh, probably was, and I thought she was a bit of a snob. Uh, she certainly wasn't and isn't. Uh, but when we became teenagers, uh, that indifference changed. Uh, we actually uh, became uh, interested in each other and, and I became um, quite uh, delightful of her. I, I delighted in her. I actually wanted to know more about her. I became an enthusiast, if you like. I wanted to know what her favourite colour was, what, what her favourite food was, what, what pastimes she's enjoyed and, and hopes and dreams that she had. Now, now what had changed? Uh, well, my affections had changed and, and, and she became my delight. You know, delight should transfer into action. And when we direct uh, our delight towards God and a focus on Him and how He's revealed Himself, we we'll want to be involved in the things of God. We we'll want to know more about God. Uh, and, and we find out about who God is and uh, how, he, how he, uh, His character is and, 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 and what He does through His revealed Word. Uh, we, we can find uh, a relationship with God through the good news uh, of the Gospel found in the New Testament. And so finding true happiness has to do with seeking after God and being in a right relationship with him. And then that flows into meditating on the things of God because he is our delight. Now for the psalmist, uh, uh, meditating on the law of God was uh, the way that he maintained a relationship with God. Uh, and for us, the equivalent of that is actually delighting in the Lord Jesus and, and the revelation of the Lord Jesus in the scriptures. You see, Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. Uh, and so it's him, in him we should delight and transfer that delight that the psalmist had in, in the law of God. Uh, Hebrews 1, uh, 1 to 3 says this, In the past God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days he's spoken to us by his son, who he has appointed appointed heir of all things and through whom he made the universe. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. So uh, we are in an enviable position compared to the psalmist, uh, for we can have a personal relationship with the living God through the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of God. And a person becomes righteous it moves from becoming a wicked, sinful scorner, uh, scoffer, to becoming righteous through a relationship with the Lord Jesus who gave his life for us to give his life to us. And it's in him we can delight. Uh, it's, it, for he's the one that the Bible uh, points towards. And, and when we understand that, uh, our relationship with him, the Bible becomes an endless supply of material for meditation to come to know him more and more in a deeper and more profound way. So the life you've always wanted is found in having your sins forgiven through faith in the person of Jesus Christ, about being in a right relationship with God. And that relationship will be evidenced by a delight and a desire for the things of God. So the life you've always wanted is found not just in uh, rejecting certain things, uh, those three things, but it's also embracing a personal reconciled relationship with God and pursuing that relationship as a first priority. So in Psalm 1, we have three things to avoid. We have two things to embrace. And finally, we have one contrast, a contrast uh, between those who seek to live life without God, the, the wicked, and those that seek to live a life in relationship with God through Jesus, the righteous. Psalm 1 verse 3 and 4 says this, that person is like a tree planted beside streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospered, not so the wicked. They're like chaff that the wind blows away. Those who are in a right relationship with God are like trees. Those who are not are like chaff. What do we know about trees? Trees are solid. Trees have shape. Trees have substance and character. Trees are useful and fruitful. Trees have life 
and produce life and reproduce life. Chaff. Chaff doesn't do any of that. Chaff, chaff has no use at all. In fact, it's just a husk. There's no life in it. In fact, I've got some chaff here. Look, it, it, it's just got no substance. It's, it's got no foundation. It's, it's just, just a bunch of loose uh, husks that aren't uh, solid or, or useful. And whereas the tree... Uh, like this is a little tree, of course, it's like a plant, but a tree has roots, it has, has, uh, it's, it's solid, it's, it's tapping into resources, uh, it has life, it's vibrant, uh, it's, it's grounded, it's rooted. Uh, now, some might think that followers of Jesus and, and uh, 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 those in relationship with God are, are those people who just don't do certain things. Uh, you know, they, they, they might live a good life, perhaps. Or they m might think that people who follow Jesus uh, do other things, religious things. They, they do good things. Uh, but, you know, for a lot of people, uh, they just think that the, ca the differences are minor between those who uh, say they're Christians or follow Jesus and those that aren't. But, in fact, the psalm is telling us there's a huge difference. It's a fundamental difference. The psalm is not comparing trees with other trees or trees with shrubs. It's comparing trees with chaff. It's a fundamental difference in a state. You can't get further apart than the difference between a living tree and some dead chaff. It's a difference of state. They have nothing in common. A difference has to do with the nature of the two. You see, followers of Jesus are like... Uh, trees. Uh, they're like a, a person who is planted, it says. Uh, they've had a fundamental change in nature. You see, the tree was planted. It didn't just grow out of the chaff. It didn't just evolve. You see, chaff has no power to change itself. Chaff has no life. Chaff has no roots. Uh, the tree was planted. The tree didn't plant itself. It was put there by someone else. And what is required uh, is a change of nature, a fundamental change in composition, whereby through faith in Jesus we go from being chaff to being trees. And what's happened is uh, that something new has come. You see, we're all born chaff. Uh, we will remain so unless through the power of God there's a fundamental change in our nature. John 3.16 says this, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And we could say it this way when we look in the context of Psalm chapter 1 is, so whoever believes in him should not remain chaff but be planted by streams of living water and become a living tree. So it's not about changing externals or renovation of character, but it's about radical regeneration, about new birth. Uh, about a fundamental change in nature. The Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. Friends, it takes a work of God to bring about that radical change. A change from death to life. A change from chaff to being a tree. When we put our faith in Jesus, that change becomes possible. And, and with that comes a change in, in our affections. Uh, it comes a change in our nature. The person who surrenders to King Jesus and is born again by the Spirit of God has the opportunity to live the life they've always wanted. And not, not that we, we won't have trouble, I mean, problems or tragedy. That's just part of life. But uh, it doesn't mean because we follow Jesus that we won't have sorrow and pain. But what it does mean that we'll have depth that we have roots, that we have resources beyond ourselves to sustain us in those times. And so the person who has faith in Jesus is sustained by the life-giving power of the Holy Spirit of God. A tree with a reliable water source can weather and survive the severe, most severe drought. But chaff, chaff's at the mercy of the winds and circumstances. Chaffs have no life. Chaff has no foundation, no resources beyond itself. The tree can be happy in the most adver adverse situation because its roots uh, are tapped into a supply beyond itself. So, you know, ultimate happiness rests in the state that you're in. The choice that we make in this life 
will affect our, our, this, our immediate life, but also our eternal future. Psalm 1 ends with this sobering note, uh, verse 5 and 6. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. Friends, to accept God's offer of forgiveness of sins through the death and resurrection of Jesus will mean a new creation and resources to cope with life, but ultimately life eternal spent in God's presence. To reject or have nothing to do with God's offer is to remain in a state of spiritual separation. The difference is as much as chaff and trees. Psalm 1 tells us that we can have the life we've always wanted and it begins with three things to avoid, two things to embrace and a contrast to remember. Let's consider uh, our own priority and our own state and let's recommit our lives to following Jesus with all of our heart, being passionately committed to growing in the knowledge and our relationship with him. You see, you don't need to win the lotto uh, to have the life you've always wanted. You just need to have Jesus. And to have Jesus is to have riches that, that all you can need for the life you've always wanted. Let me pray. God, we thank you for your word. Uh, it cuts to the heart of the matter. And Father, I pray for each person um, listening and uh, participating in this video that your spirit would uh, prompt each of us, Lord, to recommit our lives to you. Perhaps we've never uh, chosen to follow you, Lord Jesus. Well, uh, now's that moment, Lord, uh, to consider where we are in relationship with you and, and to come and submit to you. And so, Lord Jesus, thank you for the life you offer. Lord, may we embrace that and may we pursue you uh, and delight in you and, and meditate on who you are and tell others uh, this good news uh, that you, the God of eternity past, uh, have reached into and broken into this world to come and save us and bring us from death to life. So strengthen us, may we be rooted deeply in you and in your word, Lord Jesus. For your name's sake we pray. Amen. God bless you and uh, have a good day. I hope you were all able to um, glean something from that sermon for you. We're going to finish our service with the song, Salvation Belongs to Our God. Please stand and join us. <laughs>
Um, and before we finish with the uh, doxology, we um, want to farewell Cheryl and Ray. They've been with us for about the last six months, I think it's been. Nearly seven, isn't it? Um, Something like that. Six, yeah. Seven. And we've really appreciated... Um, eternity. <laughs> <laughs> we've enjoyed ourselves. We've appreciated their time here. And um, Ray's service with the creative ministry team has been really well um, wanted. <laughs> and we've loved having him here up the front worshipping with us. So um, all the best with your journeys and we know that we'll see you again when you come back and visit, of course. Um, after this song too, I invite you to join us for um, tea and coffee. Very um, humble offerings today, but um, you're welcome to hang around and have some fellowship time with us too. Um, we're going to finish with the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Have a great week.